Good evening, Kenya. On the 27th of August 2010, Kenya promulgated a new constitution. Article 25 and 26 of this constitution brings into practice and domesticates international law. Thus, we will be looking at the relevance of this provision and the recent ICC cases and the Rome Statute. Keep it point of view. Welcome back to Point of View. Today in studio, I am joined by Mr. Edgar Kabulavu, a program officer with the International Commission of Jurists, the Kenyan chapter. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Today, we are talking about the ICC. And we've had so much controversy from the um, commencement of these cases at The Hague. And um, break it down for our viewers. What is the gravity of the offenses that were put against The Hague Six? Well, uh, I must say that the charges are very grave because uh, any offence that has been that is in the Rome Statute is very grave. For example, the crime of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, and the crime of aggression. Any person who is charged before the, the International Criminal Court, I must say that that charge is very grave. And uh, the Deputy President has been charged with the crime of with uh, the, the charge of the crime of aggression, mm -hmm. which I must say is very grave because. Um, some of the ingredients under the crime of aggression include rape, there's forcible transfer, and even persecution. So indeed, these crimes are very grave. Indeed. Um, tell us a little bit more. What constitutes a crime against humanity? Well, uh, a crime against humanity is provided for in the Rome Statute. Mm -hmm. And for this particular case, in the ruto Sang case, yes. uh, the ingredients include, include murder, there is forcible transfer and persecution. Mm -hmm. There are other crimes such as rape, as I mentioned, but for this particular um, uh, crime, those three, those are the three that they have been charged with. All right. Um, looking at the, the suspects um, that were brought forward from the Kenyan case on the post-election violence, we find the majority of them were state actors. They were in, in a position of power at that moment. Did that play a part in them being um, inducted? Yes, it did, because uh, the ICC goes for those who, are, who bear the greatest responsibility. And in the spirit of complementarity, you find that uh, the ICC is a court of last resort. This means that at the domestic level, we are supposed to put in place mechanisms to try the mid-level perpetrators. Uh, and that is why we had the, uh, the Ocampo Six, okay. who at that time, most of them were, were state actors. And uh, just to go to... Uh, the principle of complementarity. It's very important that uh, these, ch uh, ch these crimes that are being prosecuted at the ICC are also tried at the domestic level. In Kenya, we have domesticated the International Crimes Act, mm -hmm. which uh, is very similar to the Rome Statute. It provides for uh, the crime of aggression, war crimes, and even uh, the crime of aggression. Mm -hmm. And also, there's the other principle of cooperation, which means that in the event that a state actor has been indicted by the ICC, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that Kenya as a state is under trial because uh, uh, there's the other principle of individual criminal liability. In as much as you're a, st uh, a state officer or a head of state, in the event that you're indicted at the ICC, you are in individually liable for those charges. Indeed. I'm glad you brought up uh, the issue of cooperation. Now, there's been a debate um, that's been going around internationally and also locally. The majority of the cases and the countries before the ICC are from Africa and third world developing countries. What do you have to say about this? Well, at the inception of the, the International Criminal Court, you find that uh, African states were heavily involved. A majority of the countries that ratified the Rome Statute mm -hmm. were African states. Uh, we have officers working at the court uh, who are of African descent. Therefore, we cannot say that uh, uh, the court has been targeting African state per se, because human rights are universal. Indeed. If a crime of aggression happens in a country such as Syria, and then it also happens in a country such as Africa, we can't say that uh, now the court needs to start focusing on the European states as mm -hmm. opposed to the African states. That, but that as it may be, you find that uh, most of the cases before the ICC that are from Africa were either uh, referred by the African states themselves 
or the United Nations Security Council. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the certain situations. I mean, we have we have a lot going on apart from the African countries. We have the Syrian and Iraqi Iraqi wars going on, and um, plenty of of um, a lot of crimes in South America that constitute or are within the threshold of the ICC. Would it not, uh, is it the lack of cooperation as opposed to, to African countries? Because majority of us cooperate with the ICC. Would you say it is a lack of cooperation? I don't think African states cooperate fully or meaningfully with the ICC. Mm -hmm. But uh, in as much as you are saying that quite a number of the, the cases are from Africa, the court is also investigating into va various other situations, for example, that of Syria. Yes. And uh, we realize that the ISIS is a very young court. Mm -hmm. And just like any other court, there has to be a starting point. And uh, for example, in the case of Kenya, you find that um, at a particular point, we had the option of uh, putting in place a domestic mechanism. Mm -hmm. And uh, our politicians were very, w w we had them very clearly saying that, let's not be vague, let's go to, to, Hague. to the Hague. So it is a, to some extent it's our own doing, but uh, just to reiterate the fact that the court is the ISIS is, is a very young court. Mm -hmm. It has a very bright future, and maybe in the next five years or ten years, we'll see even other situations and other countries uh, being uh, referred to the ICC mm -hmm. because you realize that it's not a must that you are a, are a, a signatory to the Rome Statute for the court to investigate any situation. Indeed. Now, uh, Kavula, let's move on to the issue of witnesses. It's been a trending topic. Um, we had the recent issue with uh, Mesha Kebe, and we had statements released by the ICC Office of the Prosecutor and the Registrar confirming that they did have someone in their witness list, Mesha Kebe, but not part of the testifying list. What was the significance of this act? The ICC coming forth and saying, this is our guy, we had him on our list. Well, I think it was very important for the the court to clarify uh, that issue and any other issue that arises. And on the issue of witness protection, you find that uh, cooperation co cooperation comes into play. It's very important for state parties that are sing signatory to the Rome Statute to cooperate with the court in terms of protecting witnesses, mm -hmm. because uh, the buck stops the government essentially to cooperate with the court and. The ICC being a criminal court, it's very important that uh, in, in the event that a witness is, is to testify in court, he or she has to be protected. The court has a witness protection um, a mechanism, mm -hmm. uh, which I must say has been failing for um, uh, quite a number of years. Mm -hmm. A lot still needs to be done because um, if you want to testify in court, you have to be guaranteed that... Uh, your security has to be guaranteed. Indeed. And uh, it also starts, in Africa, when you talk about witness protection, it also means protecting the immediate family, the immediate community. And when we have a mechanism that maybe is underfunded or is not in touch with the community, mm -hmm. it will be very difficult to, to protect a witness. In essence, what are the failures of, of, of the witness protection program or um, the mechanism that has been in place all this while? Well, going by the Kenyan situation, you find that in as much as witnesses were being protected at the court, mm -hmm. uh, the Kenyan citizens could access the identity of those witnesses. In as much as uh, some of the, uh, the ICC documents were being redacted so that the identity of the witness is not revealed, uh, W the, uh, to, for some reason, for some reasons unknown to us, some of the witnesses were known by the, the public. And the Rome Statute is very clear that if you uh, tamper with the witness, the court will take action. Mm -hmm. And currently, uh, there's a court, there's a case before the court okay. for um, against uh, one of the Kenyan journalists mm -hmm. who is uh, who has been charged with the crime against the administration of justice. Mm -hmm. That basically means that. Um, he, he tried to meddle with some of the ICC witnesses. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, we're taking a short break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the credibility of witnesses. Keep it point of view. <laughs>